and another most important one term we have to remember in this chapter that is cpct what is cpct corresponding parts of congruent triangles are equal okay see if these two triangles are congruent i am telling these two triangles are congruent okay by sas property that means we know two sides and one angle the corresponding two sides and the included angle are equal so by sas rule these two are congruent then what about ac and pr they are also equal and what about uh, angle a and angle p they are also equal what about angle c and angle r they are also equal why by cpct what is cpct corresponding parts of congruent triangles congruence means all are equal okay so corresponding sides are all are equal so ac is equals to pr and angle a angle p angle c angle r so we just write cpct cpct means corresponding parts of congruent triangles okay students they are equal okay now we will see do this in page number 150 there are some statements given below write whether they are true or false two circles are congruent students i am telling congruent means the circles must have same size and same shape but here size uh, we don't know size that means radius we don't know this is one circle and this is another circle suppose whether we can say these two are congruent no they have same shape but not same size na so we cannot say they are congruent so it is false clearly next two line segments of same length are always congruent yes one line is 5 cm and another line also 5 cm then these two lines are congruent same length they are telling na so two right angle triangles two right angle triangles are sometimes congruent okay yes sometimes congruent this is true not always congruent but sometimes it is congruent so it is true last one two equilateral triangles with their sides are equal or always congruent so clearly we know in equilateral triangle each angle is 60 degrees right then only na the three angles will be 180 so and they are telling about the sides also they are also equal so they are congruent by triplets property next which minimum measurements do you require to check if the given figures are congruent okay if we want to tell whether two rectangles are congruent or not what are the measurements you require length and breadth okay so here length and breadth we require next two rhombuses if you want to compare the rhombus figures so first of all we have to know the properties of the rhombus so coming to the rhombus in the rhombus all sides are equal four sides are equal and the adjacent angles are 180 supplementary okay the sum of two adjacent angles is 180 so we require one side and one interior angle to decide whether two rhombus figures are congruent or not so one side and one interior angle is required okay now here page number 153 do this problem state whether the following triangles are congruent or not give reasons for your answer so here uh, this is triangle abc and dnf so just we will compare this here they gave bc is equals to this ef okay and angle b 
okay so here two angles 50 and 70 so by angles of property the sum of three angles is equals to 180 degrees so 70 50 120 what about the third angle 60 and here what about the third angle 50 right so now angle b is equals to angle e is equals to 50 and angle c is equals to angle f is equals to 70 so observe students two angles and the included side or equal corresponding side so by asa triangle abc is congruent to triangle def that's it they are congruent reason by sas sorry by asa rule second one here l m n s r t see here just write like this l m n and triangle or s t here m n is equals to s t is equals to 3 cm and this one l n is equals to r s is equals to 4 cm angle m is equals to angle t 80 degrees so this is the given information now see two sides and if two sides and one included angle corresponding two sides and one included angle are equal then we can say sas rule but here non included angle is given so we cannot say by property just see if you just flip this triangle tsr ante reverse chesi it in ikkadiki m varaku pedthe then it will these two triangles are congruent see students it e degra nunchi just manam ila okati ee triangle ni ee triangle meda place chesinappudu these two triangles are congruent so triangle lmn is congruent to triangle rst what is the reason triangle or st or whatever it is we can write triangle m n l is flipped that is f l i only na flipped sorry double l i wrote flipped to get triangle or st okay just ila flip chesinappudu this will become this okay this is the reason now second one in the given figure the point p bisects ab and dc this ab and cd is bisecting by p what is bisecting dividing exactly into two parts okay so that is bisection and then show that this one so triangle apc and triangle bpd here i am writing so in triangle apc and bpc ap is equals to bp why p is bisecting ab and similarly pc is equals to pd also again p is bisecting cd this is the reason and this angle and this angle are also equal because these two are intersecting lines na so vertically opposite angles so angle apc is equals to angle bpd reason vertically opposite angles so two sides and the included angle so by sas by sas rule these two triangles are congruent triangle apc congruent to triangle bpd these are the page number 153 problems page number 164 do this in the adjacent figure triangle abc and triangle dbc are two triangles such that ab is equals to bd ac is equals to cd show that triangle abc is congruent to triangle dbc so just write the given information 
given AB is equals to BD and AC is equals to CD. Now just compare the two triangles ABC and triangle DBC. In these two triangles AB is equals to BD. It is given and AC is equals to CD. This is also given. And this BC is in this triangle and in this triangle. So BC is equals to BC. Common side. So all the three sides of one triangle is equals to the corresponding three sides of another triangle. So by triple S rule, the, these two triangles are congruent. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DBC. That's it.